Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can create masonry galleries using the Masonry Image Gallery widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. With this widget, you can create galleries with masonry layouts. Those galleries can be boxed or full width, whatever works with your site design. There's also a wealth of customization options that will let you adjust your gallery and set things like the space between images their order, behavior, and more. You can also combine the widgets from the key add-ons collection to your heart's content. And the widgets options will let you create different looks and styles to match your site perfectly. There are all kinds of things you can do with this highly customizable widget, so let's take a look at what some of them are. Head over to the back end. And in the Elementor sidebar, search for Masonry Image Gallery. There it is. Now drag it over to the right. Don't worry, the fact that we can't see anything yet is completely normal. This is simply how the widget looks before we add any images to it. So our first step is to add some. We'll be adding the images as items and doing so one by one. Click here to add an item. And click here to choose your image. I'll start with this one. Insert media. OK. And then you can choose which proportions or size your image will have. I'll set this one to be a square. Then, just keep adding images like this. Since I plan on adding several more to my gallery and the process for all of them is the same, barring differences in the image size option, I'll skip ahead with the video. And here we are. I added 8 images so I have 8 items and this is what my gallery looks like with them. And with the sizes I set for each. So now that that's done, we can take a look at the gallery settings section. Here we have options like the Enable Lightbox pop-up. It's set to Yes by default, but you can switch it to No to disable it. It serves to open the image as an overlay in the same window when someone clicks on it. And in this view, visitors can flick through your entire gallery. It's a useful option for a gallery to have, so I'll keep it on. Alright, next we have the Number of Columns option. It's set to 3 by default, but you can change that number to anything from 1 to 8. I'll use 4. And now my gallery looks like this. The images have kept the proportions I set for them and they've adjusted to the new column arrangement. Speaking of adjusting, our next option is Columns Responsive, where we can set how our gallery will display on different screen sizes. The default setting is predefined, and you can stick with it if you don't want to bother with setting things by yourself. But if you do want to make manual adjustments, you can pick Custom. With it, you can select the number of columns that will be shown on each screen size. Just use the drop-down menu next to each listing. For myself, I'll go back to using the predefined setting. Following this, we have the Space Between Items option. When I move the slider, you can see how the space changes. So, you can make your setting using the slider or type in a new value, which is what I'll do and I'll put 26 pixels, which is a bit smaller than the original space between items. Then we have the image hover option. The default setting is zoom in, and when I hover over an image, we can see it zooms in a bit. We can switch this to zoom out, which looks like this. Or we can set it to move, then we get this. Or we can pick none to disable all hover effects. For my gallery, I'll set this back to zoom in. And if you picked one of the two zoom effects for your gallery images, you can also pick the image hover zoom origin. This option lets you choose which part of the image will be zoomed in. We are going to keep it at center, but you can experiment to see what fits your needs best. After this, we have the overlay color. Pick any color you like for the overlay and then give it a degree of transparency to reveal the images under the color. OK, let me reset this. Then we have the overlay hover color. The same principle applies, only now the color will be visible on hover. You'll need to set a degree of transparency again to keep the images visible. So depending on what you set, it could look something like this. OK, that's it for the gallery settings options. Underneath them we have the developer tools. When we open them we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch its setting to Yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. So we get this text. Then we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Okay, that's it. We've covered all the options and my element is all done. 
But before we finish up, I want to touch on one more thing, and that is how to change this gallery from in-grid to full width. The steps are pretty simple, but a few things to keep in mind. We're all likely working with different themes, so how these settings work for you might differ. What I'm using is the key theme, made by our very own team here at Code Interactive. The entire key theme and all 100 of its demos are created using the key add-ons plugin, and both the theme and the plugin have been designed to complement each other perfectly. Additionally, we made sure the key theme is compatible with Elementor's full width page template. You should keep in mind that the same might not be true for your theme as depending on the one you're using, the full width template might be rendered differently. In my case, using the key theme, in order to change the section with the gallery to full width, I need to go to settings here. These are the page settings. Then under page layout, I'm going to make sure Elementor full width is selected. So this is like a precondition. I need a full width page layout to be able to stretch my content if I want to. And I also have the key full width layout as an option, but that's limited to the key theme, so I'm sticking with Elementor's as it's the one you should all have access to. Now, a template won't automatically switch the page content from in-grid to full width. For that to happen, you need to change the settings for the section. Click here on this middle icon to open the section settings. Then here under content width, and this is the layout tab mind you, you need to switch the settings from box to full width. And there we go. My section is now stretched across the full width of the page. Still, this leaves us with these narrow blank spaces all around the element. If you'd like to eliminate these, you just need to open columns gap and switch from default, which gave us this 10 pixel wide frame around the gallery, to no gap. And there we go now. The masonry gallery's content is stretched from one side of the page to the other. Alright, now that we've seen how that's done, let me restore my gallery to boxed, so it's back in grid. Another useful option you have here once your content is boxed is to adjust its width. By dragging this slider, you can adjust the width of this section all the way to full width. Or you can type in a pixel value you want to use here. Up to you. But this option gives you another way to adjust the width of your content. Okay, that's all. I just wanted to show you how you might get a full width section, but the gallery design I want is this, a boxed masonry gallery. So I'll just update to save my work. And we can take a last look at the widgets page. Here you can find examples of the different things you can do with the masonry image gallery widget and the different variations you can make using it. Here for example is the design I copied for this tutorial. But the options we covered will help you make a gallery like any of these here. You can copy the style and look from these examples or opt to make something completely different. In either case, I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making galleries can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its masonry image gallery widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!